Hello everyone and welcome to another Fontaine speculation video. Today, I'll be going over some of the characters we know about from Fontaine, as well as what the culture in the nation will be like. I'll start off by going over the things that we've heard about in the game's lore, before jumping into the speculative side of things. Also, if you like this video, consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. With all that said though, let's get right into the video. To start off, I'd like to talk about Fontaine's culture and what we know so far. Starting with the technology, Fontaine is quite an advanced nation, though not as advanced as Snezhnaya. Many inventions that we use in the game have originated in Fontaine, including the camera and various other tools in limited events. Now, these advancements were spearheaded by someone known as Elaine Guillotine. After the cataclysm occurred, he would spend his time inventing many new devices, including kinetic cores and clockwork mechanisms that are still used to this day. At some point, he would also establish the Fontaine Research Institute, which is dedicated to studying machines and energy. Some bits of Fontaine technology are found in other nations as well, with one of the best examples being the Makaje Furnace in Inazuma. One of the engineers who works on this device is Xavier, who we meet in the Tatara Tales questline. When the furnace went critical during the Inazuman Civil War, Xavier was able to quickly develop a containment barrier to stop the dangerous Tatarigami energy from leaking out. He also worked to create a device that would purify the furnace right after he put up the barrier, showing that the engineers of Fontaine are quite brilliant. However, the work of the engineers in Fontaine has led to some unfortunate side effects. Santon describes the air as being practically toxic fumes, likely as a result of the industrial era that Fontaine is in. Anyways, this pollution certainly does not stop the people of Fontaine from showing off their fashion. Francis tells us that Fontaine reveres true beauty and elegance, which is reflected in the outfits worn by characters we have met from the Nation of Justice. This ideal is also shared in the Varunata Lazarite Gemstone, where it says, So praise my magnificence and purity. Now, most NPCs from Fontaine wear fancy outfits, including Dvorak in 3.4's Lantern Rite event. The future playable characters that we have seen also dress quite nicely. Liney, Lynette, and Charlotte all wear stylish and unique outfits that fit with the true beauty and elegance ideals of Fontaine. Speaking of Charlotte though, Fontaine is home to the Steambird. This is a newspaper read all across Tevat, which also features columnists from the Seven Nations as well. The column All Things Astrological is written by Mona, who currently resides in Mondstadt. The Steambird also has various reporters that travel around Tevat, which of course includes Charlotte. Now, the next part of the culture I'd like to talk about is the politics of Fontaine. According to Jan Fay, Fontaine's legal system is notoriously complex, which makes a bit of sense in the Nation of Justice. The system is also rather strict, with Patrice telling us that even the tiniest infractions are considered crimes that have severe punishment. This high level of strictness could lead to a revolution of sorts, but I'll talk about that later in the video. Continuing on though, I'd like to mention the Narcissin Cries Institute that was talked about in the Nymphstream artifact set. This organization is implied to have some sort of militaristic role, with the director and vice director both fighting in the Cataclysm. After this event, many of the Institute's surviving members decided to protect the realm by joining other groups. These groups included the Marcharze Phantom and the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Perhaps one or both of these groups act as the current military in Fontaine, in terms of both standing guard and spying. Now, there is also the topic of music in Fontaine. We learn from Xinyan's lore that rock and roll actually originated in Fontaine, and that it's quite popular there. The Iridescence Tour also originates in Fontaine, which recently made its way to Liyue thanks to Dvorak in 3.4's Lantern Rite event. Speaking of events, in 3.7's TCG event, some characters say a few things in French, at least in the English dub. French terms and phrases will probably be used a bit within the lore of Fontaine, and I just wanted to mention that now. 
Anyways, I think it's time to move into the characters from Fontaine that we know of so far. Starting off the known characters, we have Liney. He was first shown to us all the way back in the Travail trailer, though not much is really known about him. However, Kirara does have a voice line about him, where she describes him as a magician that can make any object disappear, then reappear out of thin air. Him being a magician does line up with his appearance, having the traditional top hat that you typically see a magician wearing. As for what his element could be, Electro or Animo could tie in with the magician theme, as he would need to have speed and finesse to perform magic. He could also be Pyro, which would match his color scheme. Now, the next character was also shown in the Travail trailer alongside Liney, that being Lynette. Given their similar names and appearances, it can be inferred that they perform together in shows. They could even be related, and perhaps even twins, though Liney has human ears while Lynette has cat ears. Lynette also has a cat tail, while Liney doesn't seem to possess any cat-like traits at all. Either way, they definitely have some connection to each other, and I'm interested to see how they work together in the story. As for Lynette's element, I think that either Hydro, Animo, or Cryo could fit her, as those all somewhat match her color scheme. Anyways, the next character is none other than the Archon of Fontaine herself, Fosalor. She is not an original member of the Seven, as she took over after the Lord of Amrita died in the Cataclysm. I won't talk much about her here, as I already have a whole separate video on her. As for her element though, she will of course be Hydro. Moving on though, the next character is the Chief Justice of Fontaine, Nouvellet. Their name was revealed in Nahida's official introduction on Genshin's social media, as they were the one who gave the quote about Nahida. From this quote, we can speculate a little bit on their personality and what they'll be like. I've mentioned in previous videos that they say Fosalor is prone to hysterics, which leads me to believe they act as sort of a babysitter for her. However, within the same quote, they also praise Nahida in her role as Dendro Archon. They say that while others might claim she pays too much attention or dotes on people too much, they believe her sense of responsibility as Sumer's deity to be a commendable thing. To me, this paints Nouvellet as someone who likes to observe others, making fair judgments about people based on their character. As for their element, I am almost certain that they will be Hydro. Prominent leaders in other nations share the element of their Archon, such as Jean, Ningguang, Kujosara, and Alhatham. Anyways, the next character is the only future playable character from Fontaine who we've met in-game, that of course being Charlotte. As I said earlier, she works as a journalist for the Steambird, and also travels with us during the 3.7 TCG event. She is shown to be very passionate about her work, coming up with multiple extravagant titles for her articles. Even so, she still gets a bit nervous when meeting famous or important people, as we see a few times in the event. I think this is a really cool detail for her character, as while she is a reporter and keeps her cool often, she is still a fan of these people and has heard a lot about the great feats they have achieved. As for her element, we were able to get a look at her vision during the event, revealing that she is a cryo user. Perhaps she'll end up being the first cryo catalyst character, as we're still waiting for that. I hope she is released early in Fontaine, perhaps in 4.0 or 4.1, but other characters have had longer waits before. Now, there is one more character in Fontaine that we know of, that being Chiori. Like Liney, Kiara has a voice line about her that tells us more information, and she is also mentioned in Kirara's fourth character story. Within these, we learn that she takes fashion very seriously, and that she also tailored Kirara's outfit for her. We also learn that she is now a famous fashion designer in Fontaine, which is where we'll most likely meet her. As for her element, I think Electro could fit her, as it would symbolize her homeland of Inazuma, located far across the ocean. Animo could also fit her, as she left Inazuma to freely travel the world and set up shop in Fontaine. Now then, I think it's time to get back into the culture talk and my speculations on what Fontaine could be like in these terms. 
as I said earlier, Fontaine reveres beauty and elegance, which is reflected in their fashion style. I think it could be interesting if this reverence is also reflected in the personality or ego of some people of Fontaine. Some of the people we meet may think that they're better than others, be it others from Fontaine or from the other nations. With Fontaine likely mirroring Revolution-era France, there could be a class divide of sorts, in which some of the people on the higher levels think less of the people on the lower levels, and vice versa. In Sumeru, the sages as the upper class despise Zubair theater as the lower class, while the people of the theater were more or less just annoyed and upset at the academia for punishing them. In Fontaine, I would kind of like to see both sides just absolutely hating each other, each believing that their ideals are the pure and elegant ones. On the other hand, people may try their best to fit into society and not speak out due to Fontaine's strict laws. In the 3.2 run of Marvelous Merchandise, Lieben says that the people of Fontaine are antsy at the moment, and that they said judgment was soon to come, or something like that. Perhaps the laws and their penalties are getting more and more severe, which will lead to some sort of big judgment in the nation. The laws getting more strict could then result in a revolution, which would then be a major plot point in the Archon quests. The theme of revolution also ties back into rock and roll, which is shown both through Xinyan as well as real-life classic rock songs. Eventually, this revolution could lead to many changes in Fontaine, including less strict laws and punishments, and perhaps the introduction of projects to help fix the polluted atmosphere. Now, as for the Traveler in Fontaine, I feel as though quite a few people will recognize them in this nation. We know that the Steambird covered the story of us and Dvalin, so it is very likely that our adventures in other nations have been covered as well. We could have many fans in Fontaine, as well as people who treat us differently due to our fame. Anyways, I think it's time to move on to a few potential character ideas that I have for Fontaine, and what I'd like to see. For the first speculative character idea, I'd actually like to go back to my Chen Yu Vale speculation video that I released back in January. In that video, I discussed a character who we could meet at Yilong Port. This character would be a cargo ship captain from Fontaine, and they would travel between Yilong Port and a port in Fontaine located across the water. They would work to transport cargo, goods, and even people to and from Liyue and Fontaine. They could then be the one who takes us to Fontaine, giving us a ride on their ship. In that video, I suggested that their element could be Geo, as they would be more focused on business and making sure that each end of a bargain, or contract, is fulfilled. Anyways, the next character I have would be a lawyer in training. Now, we already have the God of Justice Fosalor and Chief Justice Nouvellet in Fontaine, but Sumeru who had multiple characters from the Academia, and every one of them was unique. This character would still be studying and learning about the complex legal system in Fontaine, working hard despite not understanding everything quite yet. Perhaps if we somehow get into legal trouble in Fontaine, this character could act as our defendant in a trial, which would help them get some hands-on experience in their fields. I think it would also be cool if this character knew of or has met Yanfei, seeing her as a role model to get better in the world of law. If they haven't met yet, there could be an event at some point where the two finally meet. Now, as for their element, I think Dendro could fit quite well. To me, Dendro fits well with characters with unshakable goals and dreams. Their dream could be that they want to be the best lawyer in Fontaine, perhaps even better than the Chief Justice themselves. Now, for the last character, I thought about an Institute Engineer. This character would work at the Fontaine Research Institute, perhaps as a high-level engineer. They would like to tinker with technology and would be very safe in their experiments. Perhaps they could even give us some useful gadgets that they've made before. These gadgets could include a device that unlocks the diving function that has been teased, or an upgrade to our camera that allows it to take clear photos underwater while diving. They could also be the one behind some of the inventions we've used on our journeys, perhaps including the camera itself. As for their element though, I think they could be Animo. 
I said earlier that they would be very safe in their experiments, and this could be a result of them losing a friend during the recent explosion incident at the Fontaine Research Institute. This friend could have been senior technician Edwin Eastinghouse, whose experiment caused the explosion. Anyways, that's pretty much it from my thoughts on the characters and culture of Fontaine. Fontaine is nearly here, and perhaps we'll get another sneak peek at it during the special program later this week. Also, in two weeks, I'll be uploading my final Fontaine speculations video, which is likely going to be a very long one, so I hope you're ready. If you want to hear more of my ideas for the upcoming nation, though, I recommend checking out my Fontaine speculation miniseries, which has five other videos on various topics. I also recommend my videos on Chenyu Vale speculations, as well as the two artifact sets from 3.6, Nimstream and Vorukasha's Glow. I'd love to hear what ideas you have for some characters and the culture of Fontaine in the comments below as well. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.